Okay, on the jib. Yes. Can you answer the question? What are the three exchange rate systems? Yes. Solving managed and pegged. Okay, and what's the difference between them? rate, inflation, growth rate, risk, safe haven effect. <clears throat> so the government can also intervene. We learned the word to intervene, to come into the middle. Right? So we cannot have this kind of policy. The government feels its currency is too weak or too strong. So what will the government do if it thinks its currency is too weak? Buy its currency or sell its currency? So my currency is already weak. I want to make it stronger. Do I want to increase demand or increase supply? I want to make my currency stronger. Do I need to increase demand or supply? Okay. So if we want the price to go up, do we need more demand or more supply? More demand. More demand. Does that make sense? Right, so I want to, my current, the problem is my currency is weak. I want it to get stronger. Okay? So I want more people to want my currency. Then the price goes up, gets stronger. So let's explain about that again. So I have one euro, and I have one dollar and ten cents. Okay? What is this going to be the dollar getting stronger? What should it go to? Dollar getting stronger. Give me a number of dollar getting stronger. One point oh five stronger, right? And one weaker? One twenty weaker. Okay, so we don't say you know, sometimes it depends which currency is on the left or the right, whether the number is going up or going down, right? So we just say to get stronger or get weaker for currencies. If we increase the demand, then our currency gets stronger. Okay? The value is higher. Increase demand, the value is higher. If we increase supply, the value is weaker. Okay? So the government is going to buy their currency in order to increase demand. This increase the demand pushes the price up. This is more uh, unusual situation, right? Usually this is the problem. Government feels its currency is too strong. Okay, so we talked about China recently changed their currency. It was they thought their currency was too strong. Japan during the earthquake, they thought their currency was too strong. So this is a more normal situation. This one can happen in a, current, in a crisis usually. So the in this case, the government sells their currency in foreign exchange markets. Free supply to bring the price down. Switzerland has the same problem. Okay? The Swiss franc is too strong at the moment. So a couple of years ago, Switzerland changed their foreign exchange rate system from a floating system to the managed system. Okay? The Swiss franc was one euro was equals to 180 Swiss francs before, right? 
Then it went down in the euro crisis. There was a crisis in Europe. It went down to one euro in one Swiss franc. What does Switzerland export? No. What kind of exports does Switzerland have? Watch. Watches, chocolate. So a lot of watch companies and chocolate companies were going bankrupt. Can you understand why they went bankrupt? Yes. Where are the Swiss companies selling their product? To Europe, right? So their, their product got a lot more expensive in euros. Okay, we had, let's make it easier, let's say it was uh, two, just for easy, right? I'm selling a watch. It costs me 200 Swiss francs to make the watch, right? How much is that in euros here? 100. 100. Okay, it still costs me 200 francs because I still have to pay the salary of my workers and everything in Swiss francs. How many Euro euros does the watch cost? 200. Are people going to buy the watch now? Mm. Yes, yeah, so Switzerland was work. Switzerland is not that dependent on exports. It's more of a financial center. So the banks are actually happy enough when the currency gets stronger. But the situation got so serious for the exporters that Switzerland decided to change their system. So they made managed one against the euro. Overnight they changed one euro to 120 Swiss francs. Okay? So a lot of currency traders lost their money. Because this was they thought this was very easy money, the currency trader, following the trend. Right? So they were following the trend of the Swiss franc was getting stronger and the euro was getting weaker because of the crisis in Europe, right? They were very happy. In one year they made an 80% profit, right? So put more and more money on. Then suddenly, one night, the next morning, the Swiss central bank changes it to this rate. How can they change it to this rate? What do they need to do? Their currency is too strong, so what do they need to do to get to this exchange rate? Increase. Right, so they're going to sell their currency. So they, they can print a lot of their currency, sell it. They can just sell a lot of their currency and buy the other ones. So the traders is caught by surprise. And also because even if they just say that they're going to change here, then a lot of traders panic and the traders start to sell the Swiss franc, right? So the traders is going to help too. So it went here overnight, a lot of people lost money. Some like Oanda, a company like Oanda went bankrupt. Okay? Smaller currency trading company went bankrupt. Because they made a big bet. And then so overnight the central bank changed their exchange rate system. That was big news because nobody expected Switzerland to change from free floating system. They hadn't changed since the 70s. They always had a free floating system. So it just shows in the market anything can happen. Okay? Since that time Switzerland changed back again to free float. Now they're back to the free floating system again. But their central bank is intervening. So this story is an example. Switzerland's currency was too strong because of the Euro crisis. And the government changed their foreign exchange rate system and decided we're going to have a managed one and we're going to intervene in the markets. Okay. So, have a look at this model and try to explain how intervention by a central bank can respond to a weak currency and a strong currency. So you can draw this in your notes or in your book. Draw this graph. Price, amount of money, amount of foreign exchange, right? Supply and demand. And then you draw in the line what needs to happen. Okay? And explain to your partner using the graph. Okay, so first draw this graph in your book. Or if you haven't printed out the notes, you already have. Okay? Then just explain to your partner using this graph what happens if a currency is too weak? What happens if a currency is too strong? What happens to supply? What happens to demand? Okay? What is the central bank going to do? Buy or sell its currency? Increase demand, decrease demand, increase supply, decrease supply. So explain to your partner what happens. Just what we discussed on the last here, 
just explain using the graph. Draw a line for what happens if the currency is too weak, and then draw a line for what happens if the currency is too strong. Look at your partners. What did they draw the same line in the same place? Draw 
problem was it's too weak, but now the price went up, it got stronger, okay? So increase demand. Then what about number two? Uh, when the currency is too strong? Yeah. We need to increase the supply. Yeah. So if we increase the supply, then where is the price now? And the price is there. Or this one. First one, yeah. So this is here. So did it work? Our currency got weaker. Value uh, went down. Price went down. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's how the central bank. Uh, that's what they do. Currency is too weak. Create demand. Buying their currency. Okay. Buy the currency. Price goes up. Demand line moves. Second one, the currency is too strong, increase the supply. Increase the supply, their currency, then the price goes down. Okay? Demand is still the same, but supply is higher, then the price has to go down. Do you have any questions about that part? So, Governments can also use the interest rate, apart from uh, buying and selling their currency in the market, they can also use the interest rate to influence their currency. So if our currency is too weak, what do we want to do? Increase demand or increase supply? Our currency is too weak. Increase demand. So are we going to make a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate? Do you prefer to deposit your money in a bank with a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate? So are we going, if we want to create demand for our currency, are we going to give a higher interest rate to investors or a lower interest rate to investors? Hmm? Where do you prefer to put your money, in a bank with a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate? So if we're a country, what, what are we going to offer to investors if we want them to put their money in our country, in our banks, are we going to offer them a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate? Hmm? Do you want to put your money in the bank with a low interest rate? Hmm? No? So we want, we want to keep people happy. We want to increase demand. Okay? So we're going to increase the interest rate. We can increase the interest rate and that encourages some capital inflow, money to come into our country, into our banks, into our bonds, okay? High interest rates can make investments more attractive and increase demand for the currency, okay? So it's a more attractive investment if I can get a higher interest rate in the currency. On the other side, when a currency becomes too strong, we can lower the interest rate. And this will discourage people in the short term from buying our uh, currency. So, lower interest rates will make the investment less attractive and reduce the demand. So what, what are you saying about the end? Hmm? The next slide is about the end, so you can tell us. Yes. In Korea and Japan, I chose to Japan. Yes. In the standard, Korea, Korea won 10,000 in Japan, 100 and Yes. And today, Abe, Japanese, Japanese yes. politicians, Abe, supply more and mm -hmm. so, uh, and price down, I think, uh, and price down, and both our Korea won. 10,001 equal 900. 1,000 
Uh, no, no. 90. That would be the end yang stronger. What, do, do you know the exchange rate between the end and the block? Well, maybe it was weaker before, right? But let's say it was 80 yen, now it's 110 yen, right? Just for example. Okay? So, Abe made a policy of increasing the supply and also lowering the interest rate. Japan has an almost zero interest rate. Okay? So, we have this thing called a carry trade. So, carry trade is a foreign exchange strategy in which a trader sells a currency with a low interest rate and uses the funds to purchase a different currency with a high interest rate. This strategy offers profit from the interest rate difference but also from the currency fluctuation. So here's an example. A trader borrows in Japanese yen, changes the money into Australian dollars and buys Australian bonds. Okay, the bond pays 4.5% in Australia. The Japanese borrowing rate is 1%. The trader can make a profit of 3.5% as long as the exchange rate doesn't change. Okay? So in this case, Japan has an interest rate of 1%. Australia has an interest rate of 4.5%. Right? Loan. Deposit. What is the obvious thing to do here? Borrow money from Japan and invest in Australia. Yes, take a loan in Japanese yen and invest in Australian dollars, right? Yes. Now, if the if the currencies were the same, fixed the same, then that's great. Everybody in the world would do that, right? But the currencies are not the same. Okay, what do we expect will happen? <coughs> Japan has a lower interest rate. It has lower inflation. Probably the yen is going to get stronger. Okay? The Australian dollar will get weaker. So at the end of the year, when I change my dollars back to yen, I don't get as many yen back. Okay? So I don't really make profit. But in the last couple of years, Japan was increasing the money supply a lot. Right? So the yen was actually getting weaker. So in that case, I could make an even bigger profit. Okay? I get a loan in Japan, invest in Australian dollars. At the end of the year, the yen is weaker. I change my money back, I get even more yen. Okay. Can you understand that idea? Yes. So this is called a carry trade. So you have traders who do that. That's their job. They try to find some opportunity like this. But it's risky. You can make profit, but you can also make a loss. We can use this vocabulary. The trader is short on yen and long on Australian dollars. This is trading vocabulary. Short means I hope it, I hope the price goes down. Okay, you can write this down because you need to understand short and long. Short, I hope the price goes down. Okay? Long, I hope the price goes up. Are most people in the real estate market, are most people long or short? real estate market, the average person. They're long in the real estate market, okay? They buy a house, they hope the price goes up. Right? So, if you're short here, I get the Japanese yen loan. If I get a loan in a currency, I hope it gets weaker, right? So I get a loan in Japanese yen, change to another currency. I hope this one gets weaker, and I hope this one gets stronger. So short and long just describes people's position. What are they hoping will happen? So carry trades is like speculation, right? Just we're just trading the currency for profit. But this is a large amount of the market. It results in a lot of money moving between currencies. High interest rate currency will increase demand. Low interest rate currency will increase supply. So Japan is very low. In the carry trade, people are going to be getting a loan of Japanese yen and then selling the Japanese yen. Okay? 
And this will result in a strengthening of the high interest rate currency against the low interest rate currency. However, when the traders change their position, the opposite exchange rate effects will occur. During the period of risk about interest rate and exchange rates, investors don't like that. Right? If I'm going to do this trade, do I want to be sure about the direction of the Japanese yen or not sure about the direction of the Japanese yen? To be sure. <laughs> to be sure, right? If I'm doing this trade, I want to analyze the Japanese economy, look at what the central bank is saying, and be pretty sure that the Japanese yen is not going to get stronger, right? So Abe says, the central bank says they're going to increase the money supply a lot this year, okay? They make some promise. I think Japanese economy doesn't look very strong, so I think they're going to do that. So I'm pretty sure Japan currency will get weaker, just for example, right? So now I can do this trade. But if I'm not sure at all anything could happen, there's some risk in the world, then I don't want to do this trade. So carry trade is more common when uh, we have low risk in the world. It's less common when we have a high risk situation. <coughs> so just try to explain to your partner what is the carry trade. Let's review. So, explain to your partner what is the curry trade? What does that mean? So, when you come to the class, we're going to do some partner discussion. So, for example, you two guys are sitting one behind the other one, right? So, try to sit next to people so you can discuss with them. Don't put your bag on the seat so other people can't sit there. Okay.
Oh, so I have to be make sure the, the Japanese currency direction. Yes. Uh, just I have to be sure that Japanese yen doesn't get strong, stronger. Yes. So I can make the more point. Okay. So uh, then uh, discuss with your partner how can the government use the interest rate to affect supply and demand? How can the government use the interest rate to affect supply and demand? Or the central bank? One, our currency is too weak, the other, our currency is too strong, right? And we have a choice, raise interest rates or lower interest rates. So match the right one and the right situation. Right? <laughs> Okay, so uh, David, Davidenko Ksenia. Uh, so if our currency, if the currency is too weak, uh, we need to uh, increase the demand, and that yes. is why we increase the interest rate. So okay. other people would like to invest in Europe. So we want to increase demand, we are going to increase the interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. the short term, this will happen. Okay, then on the other case. So if it's vice versa, uh, so the currency is too strong, yes. we need to decrease the demand and we decrease the interest. Right, decrease the interest to decrease the demand, right? Yes. Or increase the supply. Okay, so uh, here we can see with the low interest rate currency, People are getting a loan and selling the Japanese yen, so increasing the supply, right? And in this case, Australia has the high interest rate, okay? So people are buying the Australian currency, right? So in the short term, using the interest rate, we can affect the supply and demand, okay? One of the reasons is carry trade is quite big. So a lot of speculators respond if you change your, change your interest rate. So let's have a look, uh, just we have some reading uh, for week two. The first one we're going to look at is New Zealand. <laughs> just on the, the readings uh, on the website, right? So <laughs> we're going to look at the intervention of New Zealand central bank in the foreign exchange market. So the problem in New Zealand is, is this. They have too strong of a currency, right? So in the year leading prior to the intervention, we understand the intervention. Yes. 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 We also use the intervention for people. If somebody is an alcoholic, their friends all do an intervention. They make them sit down and they talk to them. You need to go to the doctor, right? That's an intervention. Okay? So intervention is doing something. It's to stop it. So the New Zealand dollar, also known as the Kiwi. Do you like Kiwis? Yes. Nickname. Different currencies have a nickname. Do you have a nickname? Hmm? Do you have a nickname? What's your nickname? 
Walk is through. the same as Ah, uh, person you're living with? No. In the city. Ah, uh, Suji. Ah, uh, that's your name. Thank you so much. So, uh, it has been one of the strongest currencies in the developed world, right? Increasing 26% against the dollar and 32% against the yen. So recently, in the US, they were increasing their money supply a lot. In Japan, they were increasing their money supply. So smaller con in Europe, so smaller countries like Switzerland and New Zealand are getting caught out, right? They're, they're not increasing their money supply, so their currency is getting stronger. By this much, okay? Uh, this is in 2007, right? This strength reflected the large interest rate difference between New Zealand and the US and Japan. The New Zealand interest rate was 8%. Interest rate of 5% in the US and half a percent in Japan. So with this interest rate difference, carry trade people were causing the New Zealand dollar to strengthen. So the chart below shows the exchange rate so what do you suggest to, to do to the New Zealand Central Bank? What do you think they should do? Decrease the interest rate. That should decrease demand, decrease supply, and anything else. Okay, so we can see that this is the chart showing that the US dollars per New Zealand dollar. Okay, so we can see that here you get just 60 US cents per one New Zealand dollar, right? So here you get 76. So the dollar in New Zealand, Kiwi, you can say Kiwi is getting stronger. So this is definitely a problem for countries which have exports. Okay? What does New Zealand export? Agricultural products. Or mining materials, right, that kind of thing. So the Kiwi is going to adversely affect New Zealand's export sector. Adverse means bad effect, bad impact on the economy. So the New Zealand Central Bank said the exchange rate was exceptional and unjustified. Okay. So perhaps because of the car trade, this kind of problem more than the economy. So then they made an intervention. On July the 11th, they confirmed, they intervened in this market by this first, they tried this one, right? Selling the New Zealand dollar, increasing the supply, okay? Then the price should go down. So they sold the US dollar in a temp, or sorry, New Zealand dollar to weaken the currency. So this was the first time they intervened since 1985. <coughs> but even though it's a floating currency, we said that it's not the case that the central bank never intervenes. Okay? It might intervene in a special case, but it's still a floating currency. But do you think investors like it when the central bank intervenes? No, why not? Do investors like certainty or uncertainty? Certainty. They prefer certainty, right? So that's why a lot of people lost money when the Swiss central bank intervened and changed their system, right? Or again, people could have lost money here. They didn't expect. Since 1985, they didn't intervene in the market, okay? So just suddenly they intervene, people can lose money. Okay. So <clears throat> the bank sold about 120 million New Zealand dollars. Where did they get the dollars from? print them, right? If it has to, it can print the dollars and sell them. Otherwise, it just has the dollars in its bank. It has New Zealand dollars, it has US dollars, it sells the New Zealand dollars on the market, okay? <coughs> so, in response to the first intervention, the New Zealand dollar tumbled. Do you understand tumble? When we're reading the business news about the markets, we should know the words that mean going up and going down in English. What does tumble mean, going up or going down? Down. Tumble is like fall over. Okay? So it went down by 2% against the US currency. Right? So a little bit of a change. Okay? So the exchange rate fell a little bit on that day. 
Did the intervention make any difference? The, the intervention had very little effect on the move up the exchange rate. Okay? So it fell just briefly here, about 1 or 2 percent. So it still has high interest rate. So they just increased the money supply, but they didn't do about the interest rate. So this suggests that the central bank intervention had a short-term effect in the market. So it didn't work that well. Okay. Just change for the short term. So we can see that governments sometimes they try to intervene in the market, <coughs> like Chinese government trying to intervene in the stock market. It might not work, right? Depends how much money they're going to use. Problem for small countries like New Zealand is speculators have more money than New Zealand, right? We'll see later in currency crises. So it's not easy for them. That's why countries like Ireland decide to join the euro, okay? Because just by themselves, uh, before the reason the euro was formed was a lot of countries like Britain or Sweden or Italy was attacked by current by speculator. They just they couldn't control their exchange rate, so they decide to make the euro. So New Zealand is a small country. <coughs> what the central bank does didn't affect the market very much. Do you have any question about this uh, case study? Yes? Uh, if they do something uh, in the next years? Uh, in the next years? Mm, just if they did something, I'm not sure, but very rarely because it's unusual for the central bank to intervene in the market. <clears throat> but just traditionally, some countries have higher interest rates, Australia and New Zealand. And some countries have lower lower interest rates. So we can check the interest rates at the moment, right? So we can just write in up here. Yields, government bonds, New Zealand, right? <coughs> we can check what the interest rate is today. I'm sure it's lower than that time. Uh, also here, we're not going to discuss in class, but I put some reading about Singapore's exchange rate policy. So we talked about Singapore has a managed currency. So this document, if you're interested in knowing more about the managed currency, this document explains how does Singapore make a managed currency. Okay? How does it do that? Okay? How do we avoid volatile changes in our exchange rates? Do you understand volatile? Volatile means changing a lot. So we saw for New Zealand, in one year it changed 30% against the yen, 20% against the dollar. That's quite volatile. Volatile means changing a lot, right? So Singapore <coughs> want to avoid that. Singapore is also a financial center. So they want to have stable, stable exchange rates, okay? So what do they do when there's a large swing in the currencies? Okay? Why is Singapore different? It's not a float or a fixed. So this document just explains, if you're interested about that, right? <coughs> explains how do they do the, how do they manage the managed currency? Okay. So they they use a basket of currencies, like they trade in euros, in yen, in in dollars, and they every day they adjust their currency. <coughs> between 3 and 4.2% on the government bond. So it was higher in the past, right? But that's still high compared to the US is 2%, right? We saw it in the previous past. Right? So a little bit higher than the US, higher than Japan. Japan is probably still around half a percent. So do you have any question about the 
what we study today. So then just at home you can uh, look at the document about uh, Singapore. You don't have to read all of it, just you can check the graph or some part. Also you can read about the case study we looked at in class today. Okay, try to understand better. So then let's finish there for today. Thank you. Thank you.